Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today we've got 15 things to know about the new Scadio keyframing feature. Now this may sound geeky, but it's actually super cool stuff, and it's really easy to use, and I'm gonna walk through in this video how to use it, the good stuff, the bad stuff, and everything in between. Now the first thing to know that's not on the list is it's compatible with both the Scadio 2 and the new Scadio 2 Plus. You can check out my full Scadio 2 Plus video up in the corner there, or the original Scadio 2 video up there as well. But everything that you'll see in this video was actually shot on the Scadio 2, so you know works just fine on the existing drones already out there. Now, as I said, I've got 15 things to know here, and this is split roughly into the first half being the good stuff and the second half being the, the not good stuff. Uh, there's a lot of incredible stuff here that Scadio is doing, but there's also a ton of caveats that you should be aware of when you actually go out and try to use it. Now, for those of you not familiar with the concept of keyframing, it's primarily drawn from the video editing world. Imagine, a, say, a 30-second clip of video, uh, and what a keyframe allows you to do is to specify it, say, second number five or second number 10 that you want to increase the volume or decrease the volume or perhaps zoom in. You can do anything you want to that video. You're setting a frame, a point in time, that keyframe at the five second marker or the 10 second marker or the 20 second marker as to what should be done. So that same concept exists here in the drone. You're setting these keys along this imaginary path of what the drone should be doing, the direction it should be facing, the height it should be at, the location it should be at. So it's just essentially a storyline that you're giving to the drone. It's very similar in concept to what DJI calls waypoints, except in practice, it's quite a bit different and it'll be more obvious once we get to the end of it. So the first thing you need to do is to take off your drone. Uh, I'd recommend actually taking off on the Scadio box and paying attention to which direction your gimbal is pointed when you take off. Uh, and the reason for that will become clearer a little bit later on. Once you're up in the air, you'll go ahead on the right hand side from the skills menu, choose the keyframing option. At this point, you're gonna to fly to your first frame. So your first frame of your move. So in this example right here, you can see the bike path is a bit of a wide shot. That's my very first shot. So I've oriented my camera, my height, my elevation, where I wanna start this particular movement. I've set that keyframe, and now I'm gonna to fly to the next spot. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna keep repeating myself, and I'm gonna set the camera exactly where I wanna. I can change the gimbal, I can change the height, I can change the elevation, I can change the orientation of the camera. Imagine you're just simply taking a bunch of photos along this route to describe this route. You're going to keep on repeating this over and over and over again until you get to the very end. And what's really cool here is that as you're going along, it's creating this pink ribbon through the sky. The first time I saw this, I thought this was something created after the fact, like as a demo to show how this all works. That's actually what you see on the controller in real time as you're creating it. This whole like really cool ribbon throughout the entire sky of where the drone's gonna go. You can set up to 100 keyframes, which is enormous a number of keyframes within the context of Scadio and the battery life and stuff like that. I can't imagine many scenarios you'd actually hit 100 keyframes, but you can do that. Once you've got all these all set up, you just simply hit play and the drone will autonomously fly that entire route. So you've basically given it this map through the sky of where the camera should be pointed, uh, what elevations it should be at, all that stuff is all pre-programmed and you hit play and off it goes. And in fact, the very first time you do it, you'll be at the end of your route, so it'll fly the whole thing in reverse, which is pretty cool. You can do it forward or backwards uh, over and over again as many times as you'd like. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting and useful, now's a great time to go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps with this video and the channel quite a bit. The next thing to know is that you can adjust the speed of the aircraft, uh, both as a one-time setting or at any point during that entire flight, you can just simply change the speed and it'll speed up or slow down. Now, throughout the entire keyframing process, it has its normal obstacle avoidance. And I think everyone would agree there's like no other drone that has better obstacle avoidance than the Skydio series. That's just kind of, it is what it is. There's lots of other bad things, but in terms of obstacle avoidance, like this is as good as you get. But where that gets interesting though in this context is keyframing. So imagine this is a wall or a building or a tree, whatever you you want it to be. You set a keyframe here, and then while you're building those keyframes, you manually fly over here, and you set it right there. In this case, there actually isn't a defined path between those two. It's gonna do that in real time. So it might go this way, or it might go this way, or it might go this way. And this gets really interesting when you increase or decrease the speed, it'll change the route that it takes between these points in some cases. You can reduce the chance of it doing something unpredictable by simply adding more waypoints to essentially force it along its way. Speaking of that, you can add keyframes to your route later on. Uh, so what you do is you find the waypoint that you want or the keyframe that you want, and then you choose to add another one, and then ask whether you wanna add it before or after. Then you just simply fly to the position you want that next keyframe to be in and set it right there. It's as really as simple as that. Even more interesting though is that you actually have two different camera options. Buried in the settings menu there is the option to fly the camera as you defined in those keyframes. You know, point at this tree here and then rotates around at this tree here and so on down through the line. 
but there's also the option for you to manually control the camera the entire time. So in this scenario, it's going to fly this complex route that you've created everywhere, uh, but then you can say, you know what, I'm going to control the camera on the subject itself manually if you want to. And if you don't do anything at all in that mode, it'll keep the camera pointed in the same compass heading. So in this case right here, I've got to point at the windmill, and it's going to stay focused on the windmill, and I'm not touching it at all. It's just going to keep on pointing the camera at that direction the entire route, despite the fact that I created these keyframes with camera orientations in different directions. It's a really cool way to go ahead and get a second set of shots without having to redo all your keyframes by just simply changing the camera orientation along that particular route. Next up, you don't actually need GPS at all for this. You can go indoors if you want to. Uh, you can see this here. I shot this inside. I know it's like flickering and blinking. That's because I live in Europe and the lights are different and, and you can't change the Scadio's frame rates to match my lights. So just ignore that. If you're in the US where you can buy the Scadio too, then not really an issue there. But the point being here is I did this all inside. I'm inside a gigantic concrete bunker, and you can see it's navigating through this route that I've created just fine. And then finally, on the cool side of stuff, you can go ahead and land the aircraft at the end of a battery, swap the battery out, and do this whole thing again, as long as you're taking off from the exact same spot and the exact same orientation. And then this slides right into the things that aren't quite as so cool, which is that same feature. It can be finicky. Uh, and what I found is that when you try to do that, it works. It's still technically an experimental and a beta feature, that portion of it where you just can redo the next flight and pull those keyframes back in again. Uh, but in reality, the menus are really kind of clunky and not obvious. It asks you if you want to delete the keyframes twice, and you're like, no, but yes, but maybe. Uh, and then it loads it up. Uh, and then I find it's not always as precise the second time around. But as I said, that portion of keyframing is considered experimental still. So hopefully, they'll better figure out that down the road. The biggest issue, though, with keyframing is this next item, which is that your speed is limited to five meters a second, to which you have no idea what five meters a second is, which is 11 miles per hour or 17 kilometers per hour. For context, that's just slightly above running speed for most people. I can out sprint 11 miles per hour for a period of time, uh, but I can easily out bike it, no problem. I can easily outdo anything in sports with that speed. And why that matters is a shot like this that I tried to create right here. What I wanted to happen is to basically have it track as I'm going up this incline there. Uh, and at the top, I wanted to rotate around and when I got to the very, very peak to go ahead and match me down through this bridge. Uh, but you can see I quickly outpaced the drone. Like without a problem, I outpaced the drone without any issues. In fact, there was another woman earlier that was just on a like regular city bike, just cruising along that outpaced the drone without any problems at all. And this is me going uphill into like a 30 plus kilometer an hour wind. So in many other scenarios, you're going to go way faster than that. And it's going to limit the number of shots and the amount of shots that you can take with this from a sports standpoint. Scadio says that their focus here was on a lot of other shots like real estate and creativity and stuff like that. And I get all that, but this is a sports drone. It's been a sports drone since the very beginning. Uh, and so for that scenario, there are so many amazing opening sequence shots that I can think of in my head that require speed. They require matching the speed of a cyclist, of a skier, of a windsurfer, of a fill in the blank, any sort of sport going faster than 11 miles an hour, which is just about every sport except for walking and hiking. The next challenge is that while you can delete a waypoint or a keyframe along the way, uh, you can only do that if you can fly to it. And that may sound obvious because in order to get that waypoint in there, you had to fly to begin with. But what I found is that sometimes the keyframes in the waypoint locations drift a little bit. And I had this problem this morning where it was apparently drifting downwards and the drone just simply wouldn't go to that location anymore. So I couldn't actually delete it. I eventually had to blow away all my keyframes and then reset again, as opposed to just be able to select one and delete it. And you can't do that unless you can actively fly to that and it can confirm that location in space before it allows you to delete that waypoint. I'd imagine that's an easy thing though for them to fix down the road, just allow me to choose it and delete it, like long hold or something. Next is that I found that reshooting the same pattern after a battery change can be super finicky. Not just like the takeoff part and all that, but the actual drift between those waypoints can be quite substantial. Uh, in one case, it was like 30 or 40 meters uh, by the end of this giant sequence, which is kind of a lot. Uh, now granted, it was a windy day for me, so that probably played into it a little bit, uh, and I didn't see that same amount of drift indoors here, uh, and I just haven't had many calm days because I live in the Netherlands and there's wind every day. But that's something to be super aware of if you're doing lots of battery changes over time. Next, you can't adjust the speed in between those individual waypoints. So the speed is constant for the entire flight unless you change it in which it stays at that new value the entire flight. So you can't go from like keyframe B to keyframe C at a different speed and keyframe C to D and and so on at different speeds. It's one speed the entire time, and if you change that speed either up or down, then it retains that speed for the entire remainder of the flight until you change it again. For the moment, I'd be okay with that if I could just make the speed faster. Next, as I alluded to earlier on, it won't always take the same route between keyframes even after that route's been established. 
So as an example right here, let's say I set up my imaginary tunnel um, of sorts that's got something halfway tricky in it, right? There we go, tunnel, right? And I've keyframed to fly through this tunnel and there's plenty of space in this imaginary tunnel for my little drone, it does that just fine. But as I increase the speed, sometimes it says, nah, not doing that, I'm going over or around. And I don't understand why. Like it's already established this is the golden route, but it won't always do that. And uh, you can see this here on this bridge that I set up where I set up a keyframe, it's just fine to go through that. And then it simply went around it instead half the time, which isn't really the effect or the visual artisticness that I was looking for. And that gets to the last caveat, which is the bubble. So a typical Skydio drone, you have one meter off this way, one meter this way, up, down. One meter around it in every direction is the bubble that's the closest that will get to an object in normal circumstances. So in that scenario, you can't do a lot of shots that you might want to that might mimic the style of FPV, which is what Skydio says they're going after. For example, you can't fly through a doorway with that shot. I've tried. You can't fly down a hallway. I've tried that as well. They're all, generally speaking, less wide than two meters across or six feet across. Uh, I wish that was something they would allow you to reduce that rate in keyframing mode. After all, in Skydio's Enterprise Suite, you can do that. You can reduce down uh, that tolerance level quite a bit. And that's with this exact same drone, just with their Enterprise software. So it makes sense to be able to allow the same thing here. To have a reduced bubble there would be huge from a cinematic standpoint and get it much closer to that FPV look that Skydio says they're going for. Still, despite those caveats, it's super cool. Uh, there's a lot of neat shots I've been playing with that are definitely more wide establishing shots. It's not gonna be like the really fast chasing shot because you just don't have the speed there. Uh, but some of those establishing shots, some of the kind of tricky that you can do under things, around things, all that kind of stuff is still there uh, as long as you have the space for it. Anyways, I'm looking forward to playing with this a lot more over the coming weeks and months. And Skydio says they've got more things up their sleeve in this realm uh, and they'll continue to tune it as they go forward. With that, hope you found this video interesting or useful. If so, consider whacking like at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.